Hey there, gang. Have I got a treat for you today. If you take a look at this box of comic books that we are about to break into, if you look at the edges of those books, if you look at the widths of those books, if you know anything about comics, I think you might agree with me that well, I think we are about to be dazzled by some Golden Age comic books. That's right, comics from the 1940s and 1950s. So, if you like comic books, and especially if you like really old comic books, stick around, we're going to have some fun. Hey there, puppies! Welcome to Shanghala. My name is Duke, and this is an unboxing video. So yeah, if you if you saw the most recent uh, video that I posted, you saw that I was uh, at the office and stumbled upon some Golden Age books that were bound for CGC, some Supermans and Batmans from the uh, 1940s and 50s, and uh, I think I think we must have got a Golden Age collection in recently because I am pretty sure that what is in this box we're looking at is going to be some Golden Age books. Now, there probably won't be any Superman or Batman or probably any DC or, or Marvel, you know, slash Timely comics in here. Again, those would have gone to CGC and will end up auctioned off on a site called comiclink.com. But, you know, things that we expect might sell for uh, under $100 or so, well, those end up on my desk to be graded, and they end up for sale on eBay. If you're interested, the uh, seller name is .com Comics, and the books usually end up uh, listed a, uh, a week or so, two weeks after uh, after I grade them. So, uh, yeah, uh, uh, that'll be fun. <laughs> just just to track those books, even if you're not interested in bidding, but just to track them and see how they go. You might want to check out our uh, page on eBay for that. But again, these videos that I do, they're not they're not really a sales pitch. I don't do them to try and sell you. On the books that we are selling. I do it really just to share my lifelong joy and passion for comics. And there's there's no greater fun really than discovering something new. And so when I start my work day and I break into a, a box of books that I'm going to grade and see things for the first time, maybe things that as long as I've been collecting comics I've never seen before, it's just fun to have you kind of looking over my shoulder and sharing in that experience. And you know, hopefully you'll leave a a comment down below and if you choose to like and share and subscribe and do all the groovy things that's great but you know, at the very least you know go ahead and leave a comment let me know what you think of these books we are about to take a look at and uh, like I said I've got a feeling there's gonna be a lot of things I've never seen and I said we probably wouldn't see a lot of timely books timely being the uh, the uh, name that uh, Marvel more or less went under during the 1940s but this is this is a Marvel slash Timely comic, Ziggy Pig and Silly Seal comics. And I think it was a couple of years ago um, that Marvel put out a, a new Ziggy Pig Silly Seal book. I don't I don't know why they did that. It just shits and giggles, I guess. But <laughs> but anyway, that's uh, here's a little bit of what that looks like inside. And this is in some really nice shape for a. Uh, for a book from the, uh, well, let's take a look. 1945, published by Comedy Publications. Well, take my word for it, that is Marvel. Uh, the publisher, Martin Goodman, used about a bazillion and one corporate names, entities, uh, for his for his publications. But that is indeed a, uh, a Marvel slash timely book. Wiz Comics, now, this is, uh, you would think this would do well, but I don't know why our Captain Marvel books, and we've had a few, Captain Marvel, Captain Marvel Adventures, Captain Marvel Jr., <laughs> the Lieutenant Marvels, Mary Marvel, Uncle Marvel, uh, <laughs> they never do well for us on eBay, and I don't know why, if it's just people are over Captain Marvel, if, if that kind of um, just... Fun and wholesome, there's Ibis the Invincible. That kind of fun and wholesome storytelling is uh, just so passe, nobody wants it anymore. That Spy Smasher. Uh, I don't I don't know, but yeah, our Captain Marvel books, there's an unfortunate little rip there. Well, actually, it looks like somebody started to cut this out. This is a 
cut out the pieces of Captain Marvel, put them together. <laughs> Freaking publishers back then, always dreaming up new ways for kids to mutilate their comics. <laughs> but anyway, it looks like it looks like somebody started to cut out one of these pieces and then was like, oh no, wait, <laughs> I might be able to buy a house with this book one day. <laughs> Probably not with this one, but you know this one's in pretty good shape, and the um, the war stamp uh, cover is very very collectible, much sought after. So uh, what what year is this? Wiz number fifty six. This is nineteen forty four. So this is still the war still going on. Uh, actually, July forty four, and this would probably would have been on the stands three months earlier, so this book actually came out before D-Day. So there you go. Huh. All right, Walt Disney's Comics and Stories. We've had a ton of Walt Disney's Comics and Stories lately. This one's got a little spine roll, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, it's volume eight, number nine, actually hole number 93. So that should do well. Here's a Fiction House book, Wings Comics, number 53. And this video could end up being a little long. I, I, you know, this that box, as you saw in the uh, initial photo there, uh, wasn't all the way full. I don't think I want to break this video in two or break this box into two videos. But just to take the time to chat about these books and... Uh, Tom Mix Commando Comics. That's something I've never seen before or heard of. <laughs> it's book 12, though, so uh, I guess he was around for a while. I'll have to look this one up because I have never heard of this. Um, you get some uh, DC GoGo -Go checks, <laughs> although not. Um, but anyway, uh, this could be a longish video just because... Uh, Oh, somebody cut out that coupon on the back. What the hell? You know what? Looking at this, I wonder if this was some kind of a promo comic. Instant Ralston whole wheat cereal. Huh. I don't think they even make that anymore, do they? So I wonder if this is a promo book, not something that was on the newsstands. Pretty, pretty big book, though. I don't see a price on it, so it probably is just a promo. Spitfire comics, there's something I've never seen. But anyway, I, I distracted myself. <laughs> this is going to be a fairly long video, I think. Uh, so, uh, apologies for that. Oh, that's not racist. I feel like I say that a lot. <laughs> you know, yeah, it was just kind of uh, unfortunate the way uh, things were portrayed in comics once upon a time. Is he supposed to be that tall or is that just really weird perspective? Huh. Spitfire Sanders. Is that her? Is she Spitfire Sanders? Or is he Spitfire Sanders? He's looking, in addition to being a giant, he also has some Mr. Fantastic elongating powers. That's a pretty long leg. <laughs> oh, I don't I don't have it on the camera. I'm sorry. There you go. See? See this out? See the length of that leg? Anyway. <laughs> This is going to be a long video, <laughs> which I shouldn't do because I have been uploading a 25-minute video that's like right now at the nine-hour mark as we speak. It's still uploading, and uh, it's almost done, but the hamster wheel that passes for uh, internet here in Western Maine. So this is Super Comics, which uh, I think the Super Comics actually predate Superman. I'll have to look it up. I think it might. I think it might. So that's why uh, they never got a cease and desist. <laughs> so these are all mostly newspaper strip reprints. Here's some Dick Tracy. That is some weird, weird looking chick there, huh? Here's another Super Comics. Oh, that was, what number was that? Doesn't even say. Well, I'll have to look inside. That's number 99 from 1946. This one is number 77. What year is this? 1944. 
October 44, so this one would have come out maybe just after D-Day. Hmm. Here's a Roy Rogers comic, photo cover. Looks like we have some loose pages. Nope, just kind of folded weird. Number five, holy crap, Roy Rogers number five from 1948. That's pretty cool. Rangers Comics, that's another Fiction House book. Fire hair, she was a thing. Has he got lipstick on? <laughs> Did you see that? <laughs> oh, that's a, it's, a, it's kind of a weird drawing choice and certainly a weird coloring choice. But look at that, that dude. That is one, that's one, uh, that is one gender fluid soldier right there. <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with that. <laughs> uh, well, there's some staining inside, that's weird. Real life comics, the fighting U.S. Marines. Number 26. Red Rider Comics, number six. Wow. A little bit of a spine roll here, but even so. I don't know, is that centerfold loose? No, just ragged. Real Heroes, eight full length true war stories and five other true comic features. Well, you didn't have any lack of material in here. <laughs> Things you used to see advertised in comic books. Uh, weather thermometer cuckoo clock. Okay, whatever. So the, uh, the art in here looks fairly basic, but standard for the time. The Romance of Flying. <laughs> the hell is this? Uh, we bombed Tokyo. Oh, look how they spell Tokyo. T-O-K-I-O. -O. Huh. Isn't that weird? It's got a 1943 stamp on it. 46 actual photos of Jimmy Doolittle's men who did it. Jimmy Doolittle was bombing Tokyo in 43? Huh. Looks like we get a lot of illustrations and text features. Here's the uh, pictures of all the guys who are on the bombing raid. That's interesting. We bombed Tokyo. And look, here they spell it T-O-K-Y-O. But on the cover, it's I-O. Well, isn't that weird? Not only was the spelling not standardized then, but it wasn't even standardized within this book. It could just be some poor editing. Well, this isn't really a comic book at all, is it? But it's still kind of neat. Popular Comics, that is a Dell book. And uh, I don't think there's any superheroes in here just yet. Dell would flirt with some superheroes in the Golden Age. Nothing much. The statement of ownership and circulation, I was just looking to see if it would have the actual circulation, but it doesn't. They usually didn't at this time. So this is Popular Comics 119 from 1946. All right, we'll move that stack out of the way and take a look at the next one. I might have to break this video in two because this is, it's gonna take a bit. All right, Joe Palooka. I wonder if you are under 50, it's a Harvey book, by the way. Well, <laughs> I was going to say, if you are under 50, do you know who Joe Palooka was? But my God, if you're not 50, do you even know what Harvey Comics was? Oh, oh well. Crazy Comics. I think this is a Marvel book as well. I'd have to look it up because we won't know from looking inside here. The publisher is listed as Just Publishing. But uh, 
It strikes me as being most likely a uh, Marvel slash Timely book. Might even be something in here written by Stan Lee. Although he would have signed it if he had written it. What a lot Stan Lee did that he didn't put his name on. Crazy Comics, I think that is also a Marvel book. <laughs> you could buy X-Acto Blades through the comics. <laughs> uh, try, try selling that in a comic book today. So, here's that. Carrie Drake, number two. Carrie was a, uh, a detective. Oh, it just jumped up to the Silver Age. I saw the next book here. You, I don't know if you were able to see it on camera. Not much going on there. But we jumped up into the Silver Age with a Justice League of America number 41, The Key. Ooh, and a leading comic. So we do have some uh, Golden Age DC in here. This uh, number 20, though, so this is unfortunately after the Seven Soldiers of Victory got the boot. And leading comics became an all humor title. Humor. But there's some uh, Golden Age funny animal stuff for you from DC. If that excites you. There's another Joe Palooka. Ooh, a Lone Ranger. This is actually a four-color book. I can tell by the number, 167. So if you don't know, uh, Dell Publishing had a series that today we call four-color. But it was basically a series of one-shot. Every, every issue would be a different feature. Uh, and the reason it's called four-color is because some of the early issues said four-color on it or four-color comic and like little lettering somewhere around here. But if you look in the Indicia... You know, it'll tell you this is the Lone Ranger number 167. Well, it's not. There were not 166 issues of the Lone Ranger before this. But uh, this is this is even, this predates the Clayton Moore Lone Ranger. And again, if you're under 50, do you know who Clayton Moore and Jay Silverheels were? But uh, you can tell because uh, he doesn't have the blue jumpsuit. He is wearing the um, the red shirt. So that is prior to the Lone Ranger TV show featuring Clayton Moore. Green Lantern 39. So again, silver and boom, right back to gold. Hop along Cassidy. That's a faucet book. You know, and probably... And I think I will for the rest of this. I'm just going to move more Drew out of the way here. Because my lighting isn't very good. And I feel like I'm not really showing you enough of these books. So this way I can kind of slide over this way a little bit. And we can see. Oh, see. So here, here you go. This is number 93. And I'll get right up close there. You can see where it says Four Color Comic. So that is why we, we call this series today Four Color. Although, you know, in the day... It wouldn't have been referred to as four color. It just would have been a series of one shots um, put out under a common numbering system for um, for U.S. postal reasons. Uh, because if you had a periodical and you mailed those books through the mail, you know if you uh, if you didn't have a sequential numbering, if it wasn't a regular periodical, you would have to pay a new postage permit for every launch of a new series. So, you know, if they were just going to do one or two issues here and there of a particular character, testing it out, or, you know, Gene Autry's not a character, he's a real person. Um, if you weren't sure you wanted to do a regular series of just that, and you wanted to try a couple issues first, then, uh, you know, if you, if you didn't have that common umbrella numbering, you would have paid a, a new postal permit for every, every one. So anyway... <laughs> I don't know how much that story interested you, but... <laughs> Giggle Comics. This one, I'm not sure if this is Marvel. I'd have to look this one up. Kind of looks... It looks the same, but... Same kind of style, but... Not sure. 
hot stuff. Why don't we just jump right up into the Silver Age again? Number 29. It's a little, a little rough here. Dale Evans, Queen of the West. Uh, number three. Wow, and that is a DC book, so cool. So there you go. Dale, Ev Dale Evans exists in the, uh, in the DC universe. Just in case you did not know that. Don Winslow of the Navy. This is a Fawcett book. Hirohito's Hospitality. It's that same clock we saw on the back cover of a or thermometer, I should say. Crossword puzzle. And let's see what we have here for the next stack. Fury. Oh, is this based on a TV show or a, it's got a photo cover? I don't know. It's a Dell book. So it's kind of a one shot, which is after it ended the four color series, Dell uh, did end up doing these one shots, and it, where they'd have weird numbers like <laughs> number 01292 208. That's some kind of in house funky numbering system. But uh, fans have not tried to track all of those down under a common, a common numbering common umbrella these are just listed in the price guide under their actual titles rather than some group umbrella title like like four color here's some more don winslow for you number 36 here's don winslow 18 number 45 somebody was a fan of don winslow or of the navy number 52 Oh, here's another Dale Evans. Number one. Look at that. Wow. I don't know if that cover's detached. If it just has a hole there. Let's take a look. Yeah. Oh, the cover's completely detached. No, it's just barely hanging on at the bottom staple. But this is 1948. Dale Evans Comics. Number one from DC. Huh. Look at that. Captain Midnight, number 35, from Fawcett. He shot down a lot of Japanese zeros, it looks like. It's another Captain Midnight, number 48. Let's take a look inside. See what Captain Midnight looked like. There he is. His cool uh, glider wings. Somebody just did a Captain Midnight uh, series. Was it IDW or Dynamite? I actually bought a few issues of it. Here's 42. Fat and Slat. And they were, that was a comic strip. Ed Whelan's Joke Book featuring Fat and Slat. Nineteen forty-four. Here you go, and this is kind of a classic cover. Captain Marvel Adventures number forty-seven. This feels thin. Is this missing pages? Let's count. Actually, let's just go right to the centerfold. If anything is missing, that's where it'll be missing from, most likely. Nope. That's, uh, oh, that's, I don't think that's actually the centerfold, is it? Oh, it is. Yeah, I can see the staple right there. Huh. Just felt the, feels thin for some reason. Here's uh, Captain Marvel Adventures number 46. Like I said, it, it just blows me. Oh, look, Mr. Mind. <laughs> ah, I love Mr. Mind. Um... It just blows me away uh, when we ever, whenever we put Captain Marvel books uh, up on eBay, they don't do that well. 
And that well, I mean, that relative, I mean, just eyeballing that quick, that's probably a five, maybe, four, five. Uh, could even be a five, five, maybe. Uh, I'll have to take a closer look at it later when I do my actual grading. And that'll probably go for 60 bucks, you know, but it should go for a couple hundred, at least. Captain Midnight, 25. So I guess what I'm saying, just going back to this for a second, <laughs> if you are inclined to check out our sales on eBay, again, the seller name is .com Comics, um, you might do well. You might have a chance to get something relatively inexpensively and flip it. And this would be a good book. This has some nice eye appeal. This would be a good book to go ahead and send to CGC. Be interesting to see if the CGC grade comes back as whatever I end up putting on a grade for this, or if they are significantly higher or lower than me. Um, but it it uh, it would uh, it might do you well to uh, grab that, get it slabbed, and flip it. <coughs> flip it. All right, Clue Comics. One of my favorite uh, cartoon shows, Saturday morning cartoon shows when I was a kid was Clue Club. Clue Club. Zippo. Is Zippo, is he the, um, is he the guy who was on roller skates? Yes. <laughs> oh, what a wacky superhero. Yes, he was. He had, I mean, basically, it's the same idea. Remember a few years ago when the fad was these sneakers that, that had wheels in them? That's, ba that's basically this guy's whole shtick is uh, his boots pop out these wheels and he races around on, on these roller skates. You can kind of see him there. <laughs> so, uh, Zippo is probably in the public domain now. So you could, you might be, oh, it's unfortunate that corner's ripped. Look at that. Uh, you could probably get away with putting out your own Zippo comic if you wanted to. Who is this guy with a big N on his chest? And the kid with the, the skull. Let's see. He's Nightmare, and the kid is Sleepy. <laughs> How would you like your superhero sidekick name to be Sleepy? <laughs> and frankly, I don't think uh, somebody with a big N on his chest would give me nightmares. Not exactly like a Batman striking uh, fear into uh, criminals who are, a, as we know, if, you, if you've read comic books, you know, criminals are a cowardly and superstitious lot. All right, the captain and the kids, or the cats and jammer kids, as it were. And this is actually an issue of Comics on Parade, is the, uh, the title of this series, which was somewhat similar to Four Color, in that, uh, you know, it was a different feature every week or month, except that it actually was called Comics on Parade. All right, get those out of the way. We will look at the next stack, and this is actually the last stack in this box. So, what do we got here? Annie Oakley and Tag. Well, Tag must have been her uh, her horse, right? She dared to answer the third alarm. Dun, dun, dun. What issue number is this? 16. Annie Oakley is 16. Air Fighters comic, so there's Airboy, and that's an interesting choice where the uh, the cover is basically a regular comics page, and these thrills continue on the inside. Huh. Interesting choice from Hillman. Hillman is the publisher of Airboy. Now, who is this chick in the uh, bat suit? She's the Black Angel. Huh. You know, I was uh, I was a big fan of the Airboy comic book um, that was put out by Eclipse in the 80s. And I don't recall that they ever, uh, ever rebooted the Black Angel. She would have been perfect for a, a Dave Stevens cover. 
Here's Air Boy. All right, Animal Comics. And there are, in fact, some animals on that comic. So what do you think of that? Chuckle! <laughs> That's a big-ass book. Look at this. Chuckle, the Giggly Book of Comics. Oh, the Giggly Book of Comic Animals. Excuse me. 25 cents. That was a lot of money at the, at the time. What year is this? 1945. How much was 25 cents in 1945? I couldn't even tell you who the who's the publisher of this damn thing. R.B. Leffingwell. Never heard of him. Well, there is something I've never seen before, by golly. Ooh, well, here's something I have seen. Boy Commandos. Cool beans. It wasn't that long ago we got a, a run of detective comics and we and they were really in pretty nice shape and we would have sent them to CGC except every single issue had the Boy Commando story cut out. So they were all missing like between 8 and 12 pages. However many pages the Boy Commando story was per issue. Uh, and so you know, we ended up selling them raw, no grade, just you know, missing pages. But here is, I presume this is all Simon and Kirby. It's an early Superman ad for you. And then is Boy Commandos number 20. This is number 27. They're fighting the Mandarin. <laughs> oh no, he's Diamond Hand. The crimes of Diamond Hand. Okay. Buzz Sawyer. Is Buzz Sawyer... No. Who am I thinking of? No, I'm thinking of Mark Trail. I was going to say, is Buzz Sawyer still in the uh, comic strips? But I think it's Mark Trail I'm thinking of. Oh, this one feels thin too. Master Comics, number 55. There you go. And this one has some nice cover gloss still. Wow. Like that Captain Marvel. It feels kind of thin, but I bet you it's there. Let's look at the centerfold. If we can find it. Is that it? Oh, this must be wartime rationing. This book has just one staple right in the middle, so I presume it was only supposed to have one staple. But, uh, yeah, it looks right. Is that Bullet Girl? Bullet Man and Bullet Girl. Bullet Man, the flying detective. And, uh, Radar, the international policeman. Well, this is weird. So the lead feature is not is not Captain Marvel Jr. He's actually in the back. So the question, is that Mac Ray Boy? I bet it isn't, but I don't know. I think he could do better than that. Super Snipe? That is, that's Super Snipe already. Volume 4, number 1. Huh. I'll have to look up and see what the actual issue number is. Exciting Comics. Antarctic, Antarctic Press uh, actually has an exciting comics title out. It's an anthology that I think they're featuring like new talent in. Uh, so uh, that's something to check out. But here's the original that it's based on. Same logo. And the Black Terror. The Black Terror was a big deal. If you are not familiar with the Black Terror, he's in the public domain now and he He's been used a lot of ways and a lot of places under a lot of names. Let's see if we can find the Black Terror. There he is with his uh, skull and crossbones motif. Boom. Look at that. Master Comics, number 67. And uh, who the hell is this guy? Volto from Mars. Huh. 
Captain Marvel Jr. All right. So what's, what year is this, just out of curiosity? 1946. A lot of these books have been from the 40s. Hoppy the Marvel Bunny, number three. Huh. Boom. Classic Comics, number two. What would later become, and that's actually the last book in this box, Ivanhoe. This series would uh, later become Classics Illustrated, which you've probably heard of. And, you know, the Classics Illustrated books um, had some really crappy art. There were a couple of issues. I think Matt Baker did one issue of something. I couldn't tell you what the adaptation was. But um, generally, the Classics Illustrated books did not feature fantastic art. But that's it. That's everything. So, boy, I hope you enjoyed that. We'll bring more Drew back just to say goodbye. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to get these graded up. They will be uh, online. Again, one more time, the seller name is .com Comics, And you can take a look at those. They'll probably be up within the next week or two. And uh, track these, see how they go if you're not interested in bidding on them yourselves. Otherwise, come back for the next video. Until then, goodbye, good luck, and please be good to each other.